Hey everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how to knit the head and tail of a zebra. This is a fairly simple pattern if you're comfortable switching between black and white every other row. With each of my animals, I like to include a list of that animal's attributes. Zebras are unique, social, clean, affectionate, brave, compassionate, communicative, fast, and strong. You'll need about 3 ounces of DK or sport weight yarn, or about 3 to 4 times that if you're using a bulky weight. You'll also need about a yard of darker contrast yarn for the eyes and nostrils. Remember to use knitting needles that are at least two sizes smaller than what's recommended for the yarn you're using. Some of the things you'll need are stuffing, a crochet hook, scissors, a tapestry needle, and some type of row counter so that you can keep track of the row you're on. The techniques and stitches you'll need for this animal are stockinette, basic increases and decreases, mattress stitch for the seams, crochet loop stitches for the end of the tail, and fringe stitches for the mane. This video focuses only on the head and tail of the zebra. All of my animals use the same body and leg patterns, so I've made separate videos for those pieces, and you'll find links to them in the description. To get the stripes on the body and legs, cast on white, and then switch to black on row two. Then alternate two rows of black and two rows of white throughout the rest of the patterns. For the black hands and feet on the legs, stop alternating colors and knit in all black from row 18 on. In this video, I'm using super bulky yarn, which makes a really large zebra. You can see how much bigger the legs and body pieces are when you compare them to the legs and body of this finished zebra, which was knit using worsted weight yarns. The yarn I'm using suggests using size 13 or 9 millimeter needles, so I'm using size 11 needles so the stitches will be tighter. Just a few more things before I get to the pattern. Don't let my knitting style throw you off, just knit and purl in the way that's most comfortable for you. Please like and share my videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click show more in the description area for links to more videos and information. Share photos of your completed project on my Facebook page. You can find a link for that in the description area too. And finally, if you'd like a written pattern, I've given links to the shops where I sell them in the description area as well. Okay, let's get started with the head. Cast on 12 stitches in black. Be sure to leave enough of a yarn tail that you'll have something to sew with once you're done. On row one, just purl across without any increases or decreases. And since I use combination style knitting, my purling and knitting might look strange to you. Row two is an increase row. Knit two and then increase one to the last stitch. You should have 17 stitches at the end of this row. You might have noticed that I like using an invisible increase known as make one. If you want to make it, you do it by knitting into the stitch on the row just below the stitch on the right needle. On row three, just purl across. Row four is another increase row with the pattern of knitting three and increasing once. Follow that pattern across to the last two stitches and knit them and that should give you 22 stitches. Thank you. 
Rows 5 through 8 are basic stockinette, so just knit across on the right sides and purl on the wrong sides without any increases or decreases. Go ahead and do that now, and I'll meet you back on row 9. Row 9 is where we begin the stripes. Each stripe is made of two rows, so change to white here and continue stockinette for rows 9 and 10. Remember not to cut the yarn when you change colors because you'll want to pick up the previous color on the following two rows. Rows 11 and 12 continue stockinette, but these rows are done in black. Because you didn't cut the yarn from the previous rows, you can just pick it up, leaving enough slack to cover the space of the prior two rows. Be careful not to pull or stretch the yarn here or your seams will pucker. Rows 13 and 14 continue stockinette in white. Row 15, but not 16, continues stockinette in black. Row 16 continues the black color, but it's an increase row, so the pattern is knit 2 and increase 1. Follow that pattern across to the last two stitches and then knit those. You should have 32 stitches when you're done. Change to white and purl across for row 17. Row 18 is an increase row in white. The increase pattern is knit 4 and increase 1. Knit the final 4 and you should have 39 stitches. Change to black and purl across for row 19. Row 20 is an increase row in black. Start by knitting the first 9 stitches, and then the increase pattern is knit 5 and increase 1. You'll do that 3 times, and then just knit the last 15 stitches, and that should give you 42 stitches.
Continue stocking that for rows 21 through 26. Remember to alternate color each time you begin a purl row. Let's do that and I'll meet you back on row 27. On row 27, we continue alternating colors, but we're also going to start decreasing at the back of the head. So purl the first two and then purl two together. Then the pattern is purl five and purl two together. Do that to the last three stitches and purl those. When you're done, you should have 36 stitches. Knit across on row 28, change color on row 29 and purl the first two. Then the pattern is purl two together and purl one. Do that pattern across to the last stitch and then purl it and that should give you 25 stitches. Knit across on row 30, change color on row 31 and purl the first stitch. Then purl two together, do that all the way across to the last two, and then purl those individually. So you should have 14 stitches when you're done with this row. Knit across on row 32, change color on row 33, which is the last row, purl the first stitch, and then purl two together across to the last stitch, and then purl it. And you should have eight stitches when you're done. Don't cast off here. Instead, cut your yarn, leaving enough to sew the seam and to attach the head to the body later. Thread this tail onto a tapestry needle and then carefully thread the tail back through each stitch on the needle. Just to be safe, I like to thread the tail through those same stitches one more time and then pull it tight to make a nice closure. Now sew the bottom head seam a little less than halfway from the back to the neck at the bottom of the head. Next, take the tail that you left at your cast on edge, weave this through each stitch of the cast on edge, and then pull that to close the stitches at the nose. Then sew this end of the head seam a little less than halfway to the bottom of the head. Remember to leave a wide enough opening at the bottom so that you can stuff the head.
That finishes up the knitting for the main headpiece. Now let's knit the ears. Start by casting on 9 in the ear color. I like to use white, but black ears also look cute. Remember to leave an end for sewing with later. I like to knit both ears at the same time so that I don't accidentally knit one of them longer or shorter than the other. If you want to knit both at the same time, just find the other end of the yarn and cast on for the second ear with that end. For this video though, I'm only knitting one. Purl across on row 1. On row 2, the pattern is knit 2 and increase 1. Do that 4 times and then knit the last stitch. And you should have 13 stitches. Purl across on row 3. On row 4, the increase pattern is knit 2 and increase 1. Knit the last stitch and that should give you 19 stitches. Rows 5 through 12 don't have any increases or decreases, so just continue in stockinette, and I'll meet you back on row 13. On row 13, we decrease using the pattern of purling 1 and then purling 2 together. Do that till you only have one stitch and then purl it, and that should give you 13 stitches. Knit across on row 14. On row 15, purl the first stitch and then purl two together five times. Then purl the last two stitches individually and that should give you eight stitches. On row 16, just knit across. On row 17, purl the first stitch and then purl two together three times. Then purl the last stitch and that should give you five stitches. Cut the yarn, leaving enough to sew with later. Thread this tail onto a tapestry needle and then carefully thread the tail back through each stitch on the needle. Again, I like to thread the tail back through those same stitches one more time and then pull it tight so that the ear has a nice tip. Now fold the ear in half and then sew the side seam back down to the cast on edge. I also like to fold the ear so that there's a nice indentation on the front side.
When we're ready to assemble all the head pieces, we'll sew the ears to the head using those leftover tails. And now we're ready for the tail. Using a knit cast on, cast on 18 in the tail color. I like to use black, but you can also use a two color cast on to create a striped looking tail. If you want to add chain loops to the tail, here's a way to do it that prevents having lots of ends to weave in later. Be careful not to stretch the stitch or pull it off the needle and stick your crochet directly into that last stitch. Then chain 10. Each chain is made by hooking the working yarn and pulling through the loop on the hook. And you're going to do that 10 times. Now make a single crochet into the stitch that's still on the needle. Then chain again 13 times. Uh, chaining 13 times here makes the middle loops just slightly longer than the two side loops. Single crochet again into the stitch that remains on the needle. Or for a little less bulky tail, you can also just do a slip stitch into the single crochet you did earlier. Then chain 10 times. And single crochet or slip stitch to finish off the final loop. Now bind off all the stitches that are left knitwise to finish the tail. Cut the yarn, leaving enough to sew with later, and you'll sew the tail into position on the back near the widest part of the body. Now we need to assemble all the pieces, and then we'll be able to add the mane to the assembled animal. If you haven't already knitted the arms, legs, and body, go ahead and do that now. I have an entire video dedicated to assembling the arms, legs, and body, so in this video I'm focusing only on the head. Grab some scissors, a tapestry needle, some stuffing, and a scrap of darker yarn for the eyes and nostrils. Stuff the stuffing through the little hole that you left at the bottom of the head. Be careful not to add so much that it makes the stitches spread apart. Finding the positions for the ears can be tricky. Zebra ears typically sit more on the top of the head. I like to start by holding them into position with my hands just to get an idea of where they look best. Then I use the yarn tails to sew just a stitch or two. I consider those temporary stitches that I can remove easily if the position isn't quite where I want it. I like to look at photos of actual animals as I try to position the eyes and ears and nostrils. I include photos in my written patterns and there's a link to the shops where I sell those in the description area of this video if you're interested in that. Now let's add the nostrils. With the dark yarn, sew a sort of broken V near the tip of the nose.
For most animals, the eyes look best below the forehead and closer to the nose. I like to sew the eyes on the second white stripe of the zebra, about three to four inches or three to four stitches apart. A French knot works well for the eyes. And here's how you do that. Pull the yarn out at the position where you want the eye. Then stick your needle back in through that same place and come back out one stitch away. Don't pull the yarn all the way through, but leave a little loop that you can stick your needle into. Pull that loop snug, but not too tight, against the needle, and then, while holding it in place, wrap the yarn five to six times around the needle. The more wraps you use, the larger your eye will be, but remember that more loops can also be difficult to manage, and it's difficult to get clean edges on eyes if you've got lots of loops. Then hold the loop and wraps carefully with one hand as you pull the needle and yarn through them creating a little circle of loops. To secure the little circle of loops into position, I like to add a couple more loops by stitching close near the bottom of the eye on the head and then coming back out through the center of the loops. I like to do this a few times until the eye feels secure on all sides. And follow these same steps to add the second eye. And now we can sew the rest of the bottom head seam. Find the original yarn that was used to sew the head seams and then stuff all the other straggling ends inside the head and then finish sewing the seam leaving just an end of yarn for sewing the head to the body later. Once you've assembled all the pieces, you're ready to add the mane. So you'll need a crochet hook for that. Start by cutting strands that are a little more than twice as long as the eventual desired length. These strands will end up being folded in half once the stitch is complete. Holding one to three strands together, fold them in half, making the ends as even as possible. Insert a crochet needle into the stitch where you want the fringe stitch to be. And with the crochet hook, pick up the strand where it's folded in half and pull that part way through the stitch. Your strand should have a loop on one end of the stitch and loose ends on the other. Now pull the loose ends through the loop on the other side of the stitch and then pull snugly but not too tightly. And that's a fringe stitch. You're going to do fringe stitches between the ears and down the back of the head. And when you're done, you might need to trim a lot of the ends to make them look even. Or sometimes I think it's cute just to leave them scraggly too. Okay, I'm going to stop here and I'll come back when I'm done working the fringe stitches between the ears and down the back of the head. And here's what the zebra looks like when it's all done. It's also fun to make a colored zebra. Here's an example. It's a pink zebra that I made with pink and white stripes and a fun novelty yarn on the mane. I also knitted this one a matching um, letter sweater. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel so you can get notified when I release new patterns and share a photo of your completed project on my Facebook page. See you next time.